What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the College Underdogs Podcast. I'm your host, Trey Smith. Today, I'm going to give you your weekly update with the Pac-2 situation that now is involving the Mountain West. Ross Dellinger released a report earlier this morning. I want to look at some highlights of that, react to it, and see if we can't get some conversation going. Uh, <clears throat> like I said last week, I think I'm, I'm not going to abandon this. Well, especially if it's involving the Mountain West, we're going to talk about it, but um, you know, story that was we were closely following when particularly the American Conference was right in the middle of it. And then that kind of fizzled out. And I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Vegas. I was around Mountain West people. I even made a show. I, I got one-on-one uh, interview, brief one with um, Commissioner Navarez. And I remember feeling like there was no smoke whatsoever around the Mountain West and the pack. And then someone even put in the comments, they're like, well, just because there's no smoke doesn't mean something isn't happening. And, um, and I forgive me, I forgot who it was that said that. And it may have been multiple people, but well, here we are. Dellinger has, has released a report about a potential alliance, a scheduling alliance between the Pac-2 and the Mountain West. And uh, we're going to get into that today. So without further ado, if you're watching on YouTube, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment at the end, share it with a friend. And if you're listening on one of the streaming platforms, please, please leave a five-star rating and a positive review. I'm so appreciative of the reviews that have come in. Uh, in just a short period of time of doing this podcast, you know, I've, I've launched several podcasts before and it's a very uh, difficult thing to do and to grow. I mean, even just this channel from the beginning, I get it. Some people have more success quickly and all that good stuff. Not me. You know, this has been a, it's been a process over the past couple of years. I guess it's been quick. I guess the timing of it's relative depending on, you know, the person and their platform, but, um, really finding a, a, a fun niche. I'm having the most fun doing this show and uh, getting the conversations and engagement and discussions that we have as a part of this channel, both right here on YouTube and then on, you know, the the Apple Pods and Spotify. And I have some people who are listening on Amazon Music. So shout out to those people as well. Leave a rating and review. I don't even know what that's like on Amazon, but specifically if you're on Apple right now, please five star rating, leave a review. All right, let's get to this Dellinger report. So. If you haven't seen it, it says how a new alliance proposal. Sorry about that. If you heard that background noise, how a new alliance proposal involving Washington State, Oregon State could impact college football playoff. And the key points I want to highlight here are in this article by Ross Dellinger. I will put the link down below. It says barring some unforeseen circumstance or barring something unforeseen. The two schools are expected to operate as a two-member conference. This is talking about the PAC-2, Washington State, Oregon State. So according to Ross Dellinger, and look, there's been a lot of chatter about this for for a couple, several weeks now, and I think the the ultimate domino that's got to fall before we really know what's going to happen is for this court case and lawsuit to be settled. Once that's settled, I think... Whatever way the next domino goes, whether it's a scheduling alliance, whether it's a power five invite, whatever, like we need this lawsuit, this court case, this, this thing to be settled and resolved. But according to Dellinger, barring something unforeseen, the two schools are expected to operate as a two member conference, at least for next year, and have been in deep discussions with Mountain West officials over a one or two year scheduling alliance. This makes total sense given the fact that if you're going to operate as a two-team conference the following season, you've got to start setting up that schedule now, yesterday, this summer, months ago. So allying with a regional conference, whether it's Power Five, Group of Five, whatever, it only makes sense to do that if that's what one of your options are. I don't think this is necessarily saying that, oh, this is the direction this is going and this is the long-term play. I think what it is from the Pac-2 
Two's perspective is they want to make sure they have all their ducks in a row, right? A few weeks ago, I reacted to the clip of the trainer, uh, McChesney, talking about his kids that he trains that are getting recruited by Washington State are being told that they're going to the Big 12. So I think that Oregon State, Washington State want all the options to be on the table. And so what's one of the options? What's seeming like a likely option is to remain a two conference, to remain a two team conference next year. But in order to do that, you've got to figure out the scheduling. Well, it only makes sense that to figure out the scheduling, they would look to their regional conference, the Mountain West. <clears throat> and so he says, barring some unforeseen circumstance, two schools expected to operate as a two member conference, at least for next year, have been in deep discussions with the Mountain West officials over a one or two year scheduling alliance. And this is what's interesting. A move that could eventually serve as a first step in a long-term partnership or even a merger with the league. Now, if you recall, at the beginning of all this Pac-2 talk, the merger or the reverse merger was like the starting piece. That's what it was looking like when all the power fives went ghost on them. And then the American withdrew itself. The logical next outcome was, okay, there's going to be a reverse merger here. But I think what became clear through that process is that the PAC-2 doesn't want, they don't want to be associated with the bottom tier of the Mountain West. And then there were conversations about, okay, are they going to backfill through poaching select teams from the, uh, from the Mountain West and then even trying to poach some from the American? Or are they just going to poach, you know, seven, eight teams from the Mountain West and keep that under the PAC-10, I guess is what it would be at that point, the PAC umbrella? especially if they're retaining all those assets. So it just became pretty clear that they didn't want to have anything to do with the bottom tier. Then we had the situation where it was, I guess, a Boise administrator had presented this promotion relegation idea, which I know some of you have emailed me about. I'm still going through uh, that stuff. And maybe we'll do another episode where we, we, we explore that option a little bit more. We talked about it back when it first was released, uh, first reported, but um, so then you have that. And I think the, the, the bottom line is, is what it seems is that the pack doesn't want anything to do with the bottom tier of the Mountain West. And so now it appears that the scheduling alliance could be the first step to either a long-term partnership or even a merger. Long-term partnership, that, that term is interesting because I think Dellinger's probably using that knowing if it's a partnership, it could be something that functions in a promotion relegation type format. And then even a merger and it's like, or even a merger comes off like that's the last resort. And maybe not. That's just how I'm interpreting that. He goes on to say the league has proposed a wide variety of models. One version would have OSU and Washington state, WSU, each playing eight Mountain West opponents in 2024. Another has them playing seven. One has their games counting towards conference records. Another has them as non-conference matchups. This is referring to the Mountain West, that is. And then here's another key point here. Any scheduling alliance is likely to feature a compensation package and or a long-term commitment from Oregon State and Washington State to the Mountain West built around the idea of eventual full membership. So any scheduling alliance is likely to feature a long-term commitment or a compensation package from Oregon State and Washington State to the Mountain West built around the idea of eventual full membership. So the Mountain West is creating these models. Uh, The Mountain West is putting this together with a long-term plan of some sort of long-term commitment, merger, alliance, whatever we want to call it, partnership. Um, 
And this is interesting, right? Because here's where I think a long-term commitment would stall between the Pac-2 and the Mountain West is the fact that the Pac-2 doesn't want those safeguards, any safeguards that would keep them locked into the Mountain West, I think for a couple reasons. One, um, the Mountain West media deal is due up in the 25-26. So kind of like right now, the Pac, this is the last year of their media, current media deal, 23-24. And all the teams that are leaving the pack that have left, that are, yeah, I guess they've left the pack or that will be leaving the pack, joining other conferences next year, they didn't have to pay any exit fees because they're playing under an expiring contract and they have not signed a new deal. So part of me wonders, okay, could the pack too be looking to partner with the Mountain West for two years. Once the Mountain West gets to that last year of their media deal, then being able to bring in Mountain West teams when those Mountain West teams don't have to pay exit fees. Obviously, the Mountain West is trying to safeguard against that. And so that's where I think this thing could start to stall out. Because the Mountain West obviously wants to get involved in this if it means they could add two what would what would be quality members to the conference and who knows maybe work something out where it falls under the pack umbrella maybe keep the autonomy status you know there's a lot of a lot of a lot of things to like about that potential merger partnership but at the same time what the mountain west doesn't want to do is hey let's help these pack two schools stay afloat for two years and then after two years all our teams leave to go play under their umbrella because they can leave without an exit fee. I know the Mountain West is probably also thinking, hey, we want to have some sort of long-term security here because if we help you for two years, we want to be able to use you, you to be a part of us when it comes to renegotiating or negotiating a new deal for our television rights. So it's very interesting. Um... And that's what I'm curious. Like, what are your thoughts on this? You know, do you think there's a feasible outcome here where the Mountain West can partner with the Pac-2 where they get enough of a commitment from the Pac-2 long-term where it doesn't backfire on the Mountain West two years down the line or on the flip side, is there a way where the Pac-2 can work with the Mountain West these next two years to create some sort of long-term partnership or merger under the Pac umbrella that somehow doesn't destroy the Mountain West Conference? Now, what would that look like practically? I mean, the only thing I could think of is if they went to some sort of promotion relegation model. My other thought is, well, I guess my other thought I was going to say is, is if they stay afloat for two years, they rebuild with select teams from the Mountain West, and those select teams from the Mountain West would essentially rip the heart out of the Mountain West. And then the, I would think someone like Gloria Navarez would become the commissioner of the pack. I mean, I don't know that to be a fact, but I mean, that could be that that could be some sort of that, that's an outcome that could happen as well. Um, pure speculation. But then what happens to those leftover Mountain West teams? You know, do they look to, does, you know, I guess it would depend on who it is, which would depend on if a conference like the American Conference or another G5 conference were to explore, <clears throat> explore itself, explore expanding westward again. Yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, that media deal expiring in 25, 26. Yeah, I mean, I could, it's like, that's what I'm wondering. Like, how, how do you do this in a way where if you're the Mountain West, where you ultimately benefit your conference in its next media negotiations and not get, you know, not help these two teams the next couple years and then these next two teams you know you you know use the aura you know use their conference name 
to take teams from you. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. And so that, anyways, my point in kind of rambling there for a second, my point is this, where I think this thing could stall out is if they can't, each side can't get on the same page with a long-term commitment versus, you know, just wanting to do something the next couple of years. Now, the pack, depending on how things play out, you know, and what their options are or aren't, they might have to, they might have to meet the Mountain West halfway and make some sort of, uh, you know, considerations, compensations in order for this to make sense for the Mountain West. Because the last thing you would like to see from the Mountain West perspective is that, like I said, they helped the pack two for two years and then they end up getting, getting raided by that conference, those two, two teams, that conference they just helped. Now, here's the next piece to this, and then I'll be done. But how this can impact the playoff, the CFP. And I'm going to read this to you because the way this sounds is some of these impacts could happen immediately. You know, there are certain things that are going to require a unanimous vote, but there's another piece here that sounds like wouldn't require a unanimous vote necessarily, unless I'm misunderstanding it. So in the same article, Dellinger says, changing the format immediately, starting with next year's CFP, requires a unanimous vote among the 11 members. We already know that. In other words, changing the format from a 6-6 to a 5-7. Oresco's already gone on record and said he doesn't, he's not going to vote to change that for the next two years, but would be okay with that moving on from the current CFP contract in the event that the PAC chose to cease operations. And that's where I wonder too, is it's like, okay, if the Pack and Mountain West create this promotion relegation league, do you keep the 6-6 though? I mean, because now you still technically have a fifth autonomous conference and you still have a fifth, you know, group of five conference. It's just changing year to year. Well, depending on how it, it, it depending on what it looked like. So it says uh, unanimous votes are not required for changes starting in 2026. In fact, CFP's existence spans just three more additions. There is no binding agreement after the 2025 college football season for both playoff format and a TV contract. And here's what he says. If they remain a two school conference, Oregon State and Washington State may be considered independent within the CFP format. Remember, the CFP format isn't necessarily governed by the NCAA. And what does that mean? That means that Oregon State, Washington State, if they were seen as independents the next two years, they would only be eligible for a CFP bid as an at-large bid. And it says... Though such a decision has not been made, most believe that to be the expectation. So let me, if they remain a two-school conference, Oregon State and Washington State may be considered independents within the CFP format and only eligible for at-large berths. Though such a decision has not been made, most believe that to be the expectation. So again, that's another thing Washington State, Oregon State's got to take into consideration is, okay, if we function as a two-team conference, this could put us in a position, even if we're in this partner with the Mountain West, this could put us in a position to only get a CFP, only be eligible for a CFP bid as an at-large. And quite frankly, the only at-large team that's likely going to be, the only independent team that's likely going to be getting that at-large bid is Notre Dame. So that's the latest report. I mean, curious what everyone's thoughts are on this. You know, how much does the CFP impacts combined with a long-term commitment with the Mountain West, like how much is that going to influence what Oregon State and Washington State choose to do once this court case situation is resolved? And then I'm curious. Do you feel like this report means that a Power 5 invite is completely off the table? Or is a Power 5 invite just simply pending how this court case resolves? Let me know your thoughts. That's it for today. Uh, In fact, tomorrow, I got a a comment mainly on yesterday's show that I'm going to respond to uh, as far as this CFP race for for the G5s. 
But uh, we'll get to that tomorrow. I'll also do my pickums tomorrow. And uh, that's it for me today. Thanks for watching or listening to another episode of the College Underdogs podcast. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Trey Smith, College Game Time.